Well hello everybody, welcome back to In My Shed, I'm BC and we face up this time to announce 435 subscribers. Thank you very much for your support and it's encouraged me to get on with the job and put a few more videos up. Uh, good response in the last week and also since December I've more than tripled my number of subscribers so it's accelerating at a fairly good rate. Today I'll be talking a bit more about tool and cutter accessories, so we'll swing down onto the table and look at a few more books. I think you've got to broaden what you look at a little bit to get as much information as possible. And we'll just go outside to show you an unexpected tool grinder that probably a lot of guys have got in their shed and wouldn't think about. So, out we go. Well, what the heck have we got here? Not what you'd expect to see in a tool and cutter grinder video. However, it does have some features. Um, one big drawback, it only does half the speed you expect for a tool grinder or a metal grinding tool, but it does have a lot of what you need. It has a tilting table, it has an angle fence, and it has sliding motion when it's not full of rubbish. Uh, all you need for four facet drills, uh, a simple tool block, and I'll show you a very good setup for hover to die chases shortly, but that allows you to grind a lot of the plane tools, uh, turning tools, chisels, and four facet drills very, very simply. And not very expensive, I think I paid under $200 for that, and the discs do last for a long time. Here we are back at the table, and this is a manual I picked up for my Royal Oak Universal Form Relief fixture grinder. Now we've seen that operating with countersinks before but I thought one bit of explanation is on timing the cutting tool to the cams. And I showed a demo of it but this is a, a good picture out of the manual. There is a setting lug that drops into the cam plate, into the setting groove of course, and you then align the tool to the collet so that the leading and trailing edge of the flute are perpendicular to the table and just use a machine square for that. Now it doesn't matter how many flutes there are on the cutter as long as the cam matches that particular cutter and it's always the leading and trailing edge of the flute aligned perpendicular to the table. Quite simple except for me I spent many many days trying to figure it out and I timed a trial and error got it to work and found out I was exactly where the manual told me to be. So if I hadn't believed the bloody book in the first place, I could have saved a bit of time. But uh, excellent information that they send out. It just takes lots and lots of reading, a lot of demonstration pages there, how to set up the um, adjustment for the percentage of axial and radial relief. You can position it in many holes on the cam follower. Uh, good. These sort of books are where you learn about tool and cutter grinding. Now there's a very good book available called Tool Room Grinding. It's put out by the Norton Abrasive Company. Um, I've got that as well in my uh, library. But here's another one brought out by Carborundum Company. And I don't know who copied who. Uh, very difficult to say. This is a very, very old book, as you can see by the machines in here. Is there a date on it? No, no date. I find that these old books are fabulous. You get to see how some poor bugger had to work years ago with these machines, but yeah. Full of diagrams, explanations, what grinding wheels to use, how to set up your tool and cutter grinders. Wheel types. And I think this might have come from the Ozark um, workshop book firm over in USA. But it was a good buy. All of these books will have a couple of different setups in them. So even though you spend 60 or 70 dollars getting it here, um, how to grind the corners on shell mills, helical milling cutters, there's always something that you haven't seen in another book. So very, very good value for money. Uh, positioning for grinding of involute gear cutters and one hit that came out of this book is to index and grind the back of the cutters 
before you index and grind the front. So you've got an accurate reference because the position of the rear of the uh, body and the front face may not always be dead accurate in relationship to each other. So you grind them accurate. And once they're accurate, you can then index off the other side. So very, very good information. I can recommend that book. That is if you're not too much how to grinding info. Uh, another good book, Grinding Machines in Their Use. Uh, a little bit more on the technical side. Uh, very, very old copy. And lots of good information. This is more of a um, textbook. And uh, I don't mind that. Once again, based on very, very old machines. But that's a good read. This is a little bit off subject or still reasonably on. Metal cutting and tools and design of jigs and fixtures. Uh, there's a lot in jigs and fixtures. And if you want to create jigs that you can rapidly change from one operation to another, uh, it does help. I've got something to show you soon about a very, very good fixture. And I think that doing things like four facet drills are uh, very, very quick and simple as long as you have the setup. Another book as old as me, Fixtures for Turning, Boring and Grinding. A very, very good text for um, the apprentice or for the tradesman, but there are a few grinding jigs in there that are worth looking at. So I can recommend hunting those down on eBay or on the old uh, bookstores and uh, worth the money. A little bit on the technical side with this, but it will help you. Now a new addition to the shop, all the way from USA. Something I've been looking for for some time, made by Mr. Starrett. A cutter clearance gauge. There are quite a few up for sale and they were rubbish, in very, very poor condition. Rusted, reconditioned with a bit of Scotch-Brite in inverted commas, and are not really what I wanted. This came up and it said, as new condition. So I took a risk and spent a couple of hundred dollars and I got this little beauty. It is as good as new and surprisingly, a bonus. The little book came with it. Their advertising department spent a lot of time writing this. It tells you that this will save your day and replace 14 other tools in the shop. It probably works like a bloody vacuum cleaner after hours as well. But I do say it is an excellent piece of kit. Really well put together. Once you read the instructions, fairly simple to use. And hey presto, you read the angle, off the scale up the top. Fully adjustable for diameter of the cutter and for the height of the tooth. Just spin it around and you read off, this is just under 14 degrees clearance. It can even be brought down fine enough to read the primary clearance on the end of end mills, etc. So quite a worthwhile piece of kit. You do, however, need another three or four ends to hold everything. Uh, especially if you're trying to do it for a camera. But I think that I'll be using that a fair bit just to check the accuracy of my work. Now this I've had in front of the camera before and it's all reversed. Try and get it dead in the centre. This is a Coventry die head chaser sharpening jig and it took me a little while to figure out what it actually does. Your covering and eye chasers can be ganged up four at a time in here to grind the relief. And in the front you grind the chamfer angle one at a time. Now whoever the design draftsman was, was a very, very smart fellow. Covering and eye chasers have different uh, rake angles depending on what material they're designed to cut. And rather than make a jig that you rotate on hinges and lock up against a uh, angular gauge, he decided to build the angles into the base and the body. Inside here, 
is written the expected rake angle that you want to achieve and it changed the rake angle. Boy, this is bloody brilliant. That gives you one rake angle. That gives you a different rake angle. That gives you a third rake angle. All built in to the same fixture, the same base and the same body. But all that does by changing the different position, you change the angle on that. The same can be done for uh, four facet drills. Mount your drill holder in a block and just change the position to get the different angle. So that same idea can be transferred from one fixture to another in its simplicity. I'm a bit surprised though, the later model of these jigs did go to an angular pivot with a scale off the bloody side. Uh, why I don't know. To me, this is the epitome of a cutting tool fixture. It is simple, it works, and it's only going to last for about 10,000 sets of cutters. Maybe that's why they changed it. But beautiful piece of material and gives you a bit of inspiration, a bit of an idea how the hell can I set up a jig to simply adjust a couple of different angles. And not only does it change the angle, but it provides a stop. Once it's in place, it's perfect every time. You could probably put a square tool holder in there and hold any tool you wanted at the desired angle that you've built into the base. And being just a simple bit of cast iron, or you could use mild steel plate or any material, it's very, very easy to get the angles right in the jig. Okay, at the end for this video, please like and subscribe. And next we'll be cutting up a bit of steel for some parts for my loco. Bye for now.